Okay, it is. It's, it's recorded now. Yes, thank you. So we discussed the F1 uh, simplified architecture for F1 uh, platform um, um, as compared to the uh, more um, uh, feature packed autoware. Um, which had had more modules than than this one, um, uh, so and then we started discussing each of those uh, sub modules like localization with with reference to F110, and how how what what we use lidar, how we use lidar point cloud to um, in addition to the odometry data to localize ourselves um, um, better in the in the uh, map environment. Um, we also saw that in 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 real um, autonomous vehicles on that are driven on road, like by the industry, and they use uh, HD three D semantic map um, for reference uh, to compare their live point cloud with the semantic map three D map. Um, after that, we saw how localization is done using point cloud. Um, um, the first approach is to get your point cloud and then do the matching with your existing map. Um, and find a closest match is done using an algorithm called iterative closest point ICP. Um, the working was pretty simple and straightforward. You want to find out the rotation and translation of your um, source point um, on that, um, uh, such that it the distance from the source to target is minimized, the mean square error. Um, and then here's some example, visual example on how this is done. It takes a few iteration and it's a good idea to always give it, give it some close reference um, instead of randomly trying to align it because it might try to, it might find a, a good fit with a low mean square error, but might not be the exact um, uh, alignment. Um, it's like uh, it hacks itself. So that's about ICP and then um, this is how it looks in the real world. Um, the green and blue are two different point clouds. One is from the 3D HD map and the other one is from the live um, recording of point cloud. And then after you have uh, localized, um, sorry, after you have matched uh, your observation, your uh, point cloud, uh, you implement a localization algorithm. Uh, a very popular one is a particle filter where you start at some point and um, um, you kind of uh, spread your confidence all across the map that um, in, the, in, in the sense of separate points like samples with equal weights at the start, like uniformly. And then uh, as you move and you observe, you change um, the uh, importance weight uh, is what it's called of each point uh, based on what you observe. So some point might not um, be consistent with your observation. So you decrease those. Uh, weights while you increase the weights that are more consistent. So here you will see like two of the point cloud blobs forming because these two rooms apparently looks way, look very similar. So the entry looks very similar. So uh, once, however, it encounters the uh, this part, it breaks the symmetry and uh, it is high confidence now. Uh, then we discuss uh, after localization, um, there's path planning where um, you want to navigate um, from point one to point two locally. Uh, there are several algorithms to do this. Uh, one of the very popular one is A star. Um, um, more robust than A star is hybrid A star, which is used in autoware, I think. Um, then there's uh, there's a class of algorithm for uh, called RRT. Rapid exploring random trees, which is graph based, um, and uh, it kind of keeps exploring uh, all the open spaces first. So, um, like a tree branch. A star is more like a heuristic based. Um, you keep a heuristic from any state to the goal, and then you also keep a track of how much you have moved from the start to the current pose. And then, based on that, you find out the cost of um, taking um, certain action from that state. And then um, then comes the control part um, uh, on a front end. Now the control part, I did not discuss uh, in detail. I'll, I would like to discuss one algorithm which I skipped last time because of time constraint. Um, so in control, um, we need to do two kinds of control in, in, in this platform. So one is longitudinal, actually even in the actual car. One is longitudinal control and one is lateral control. Longitudinal, longitudinal control basically means that you're controlling your velocity or your acceleration um, 
uh, along the direction of the car and uh, you want to minimize so you have some certain reference which you want to keep when you are when you are moving and you want to minimize the error that you accumulate um, uh, um, because uh, when you're moving your sensors might not be perfect and uh, uh, actuation also might not be perfect so you want to minimize and keep tracking what uh, is the reference so uh, this can be done uh, by using a simple pid controller um, like this, um, each one, each term has a significance on, on how the uh, transfer function looks like um, at the output. So after that, um, the, the, I would like to discuss the lateral control because it is one of the very popular algorithm and um, the, the first autonomous vehicle that won the, won the DARPA challenge kind of used a modified version of pure pursuit and uh, um, Yes, so um, for lateral control is basically meaning uh, how you control your steering to get back on the on the reference line. Suppose this is the reference line and you want your car to get back um, to this point. So how pure pursuit works is it keeps the look ahead uh, distance. So in this case, uh, if your reference um, frame for the car is on the rear wheels, um, your, uh, and suppose the look ahead distance is here, right? you want to minimize um, this error. This is um, the cross track error that you want to minimize um, um, using lateral control. So how this is done is basically taking a um, arc uh, path like this, which is uh, described by this equation. Um, so it's, a, uh, it's based on some simple trigonometry. Um, you, know, you can look in the papers, like five pages of paper, um, but it's quite intuitive. Um, as you can see, the this distance is the look ahead distance that I just said um, that we can. It is it's like uh, tunable, so um, your steering angle is dependent on um, on that look ahead distance, and this look ahead distance in is in turn this is this um, this is like a the, uh, curvature of the arc that you're taking. So um, it is inversely proportional proportional to the look ahead distance. So meaning that the steeper uh, you are taking that arc, um, the uh, smaller, uh, sorry, so it's it's not a linear relationship, it's a nonlinear relationship clearly. So if you have your look ahead distance very large, your, um, your, your arc will be very sluggish, uh, your path will be very sluggish as, as seen in this one. So suppose the look ahead distance is far away and due to this relationship, uh, the arc formed is very uh, lazy. Um, this is fine for slow speed. Um, however, if, if you have a small look ahead distance, um, the arc that you're taking will be very steep, um, will be very um, uh, um, uh, kind of, uh, um, it's, it's a proportional, so this two by LD square is like a proportion, it describes, they describe it as a proportional gain. So uh, this is tunable but it certainly depends on the look ahead distance that you choose. And there's no relation of uh, this equation with the velocity. So it, this, this, this vanilla algorithm of pure pursuit suffers when the speed is uh, like changed. So if you have a LD for low speed, it will not work for high speed. Or if you have for high speed, it will, well not, it will not work for low speed. So um, that's there. And then, um, so to, to tackle that velocity problem, because at a, a different speed, there will be, um, we need different um, control for, for your lateral uh, steering angle. So to tackle that, we replace the look ahead distance by dynamically calculating it. So this is like some uh, gain, okay? And uh, this is your uh, live velocity, okay? And then um, now whatever your velocity is based on that and the factor K, you will choose your look at distance. So if you have a, sp a small speed, you'll uh, choose kind of a small look ahead distance. But if you have a, if, if the speed is fast, then you need to kind of need time to get to the look ahead distance. So um, that's about pure pursuit algorithm. The variant that uh, Stanley, control, the Stanley uh, 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 team used for this is called a Stanley controller. Uh, it's, uh, they added a few terms uh, to make it more stable. So I also discussed some of the approaches um, in F110. Some are based on um, like um, moving around the environment without a map, without a prior knowledge of the map. 
and purely based on reaction. Uh, um, sorry, sorry to interrupt, Nitish. Uh, yes. Does the uh, control algorithm you just presented, does it handle dynamic like um, uh, obstacles? No, this does not handle obstacle at all. This is just to uh, minimize the lateral error. So uh, it helps to steer back to the reference trajectory that your path planning algorithm gives. There's no implementation of uh, uh, obstacle avoidance. In this. Let's say if your plans like trajectory is is somewhat respecting the dynamic environments or, or obstacles, then uh, will this help? So this trajectory is purely based on like uh, the circle arc, right? So even if you have an obstacle and if you dynamically kind of move your look ahead distance to ahead of the obstacle, uh, you will still move in an arc and it will not guarantee whether you will um, collide with the obstacle or not that way. Yeah, what I'm saying is that, look, like uh, this uh, with small or large overhead, it's, it's still deviating away from its trajectory. And if there is some obstacle, or let's say that uh, you, you cannot touch the boundary, like you, you you want to avoid getting out of the tracks, then it's it's not really like precisely controlling that. Like it's um, there is some error, right? Uh, that's what I'm saying. In in this one. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So this is this is showing the uh, dependency of velocity on on this look ahead distance. So if if the look ahead distance is too small and then your velocity is very large, you'll start wobbling around the reference trajectory. So if, if the, the, question, the initial question, if, if we want to incorporate obstacle avoidance in this, it has to be done by the path planning algorithm itself to find the trajectory around that obstacle. So task of the pure pursuit is just to get back to that reference trajectory. I see. Um, but still, either, either of this case, if you look at this, with small or large overhead, there is all, both there, there is some error, like um, in terms of the, the path, right? So. Yeah. Yes, there is. Um, that's why this is, uh, as we'll see, MPC is more reliable in this, in this sense. This is like kind of a PID control, but um, the proportional part is nonlinear, uh, has a long nonlinear relationship. That's why this, this got that popularity and uh, was used in uh, some of the approaches earlier. I see, thank you. Can, can I yeah, add, it's can a very I basic answer. Sure, sure. Yeah, so here the trajectory is not aware of the vehicle dynamics at all. Uh, yes. Which is the reason why uh, the, the it's not the fault of the the actual path, but the provided path is uh, it's not possible at all. It does not obey the non holonomic constraints of the car, which is why it can't turn turn that way. There's just no way the car can turn that way, uh, which is why it will deviate. So it's not that the car is wrong. It's just that it's unaware of the dynamics, and uh, algorithm like MPC or even we don't even have to use MPC for this. There are um, normal trajectory tracking algorithms. Um, which can generate parts which are aware of the vehicle dynamics. Like there's one method called a curvature control. Uh, basically, in that method, the path is the path is just uh, a varying radius. That's that's all. So it's a continuously varying radius. So which means a straight line will have an infinite radius. Um, so in such a method, because the radius is continuously varying. Um, which is proportional to the steering, right? So you can, it is possible to control the car along the path uh, provided by such method. So the the path generation method matters. And in like drones and stuff, they use spline techniques just for this reason, because splines give you um, a, a actually followable path rather than uh, giving this sharp turns, which are uh, not possible to follow. Yes, that's, uh, yeah, that's more, accurate answer i think uh yeah I, I read in the paper that for for sharp turns it is not possible to track exactly because of the dynamic constraints and this is purely based on like what the car sees uh, how how far the look ahead distance is and 
this relationship it's not aware of as Sudarshan said of the dynamics it's not taking that into account so the stanley controller um, since this does not check in any way whether the steering is uh, um, or, or um, like reaching the max value or the min value um, this is not aware of, of of those things when when you are kind of on the edge of your dynamics um, to tackle that stanley kind of um, implemented a case, uh, different cases for for when you your cross track error is too large. In that case, there is a special case that you need to do. And then if you're um, if you're uh, if you're too far from the reference trajectory, and uh, then there's there's like you have to go first to the towards the reference trajectory and then start following the uh, the reference track. So. Um, Yes, that's that was about the very simple control algorithm for longitudinal and lateral control. Um, other approaches uh, to solve the F110 navigation is one of the very popular one, which most of the team uh, uh, implement is a reactive algorithm. Um, from that, um, the most popular one is the follow the gap, which I'll discuss shortly. And then uh, there are optimization based uh, algorithms, um, which we have implemented. And then uh, in the optimization, um, there's also raceline optimization, um, which in which they kind of have a offline, they, they create the optimal trajectory offline and then use some control algorithms like we discussed um, to follow that uh, optimal trajectory. Um, and then if, if there is an obstacle in their path, they turn reactive in that case. And there are some learning based algorithm using reinforcement learning or deep learning. And then there are possibility of several research um, domains. So uh, for understanding following the gap, um, I think I discussed this briefly. Um, this one kind of, so if, if your LIDAR point cloud looks like this, um, this is like a sequence, continuous sequence of your LIDAR points. What you want to do is find the largest gap, okay? And then um, there's some threshold that needs to be obeyed. Um, because um, you don't want to choose a gap which is too narrow for the car to pass. So there's a threshold and um, uh, minimum number of points uh, this, this gap should have. And then you basically um, iterate through all the gaps you found and find the, the, most be the best one and then go over there blindly. Um, it's not aware of any dynamics or it is purely reactive. You constantly do this every time step and uh, navigate. So um, I think UNCC team um, in, pre in, in one of the past year challenge uh, modified this follow the gap to, to tackle this problem uh, where your gap is large in this direction. But if you take this, you might, your, your, because it's not considering your vehicle dynamics, right? So um, you will collide with the wall. So to tackle that, what they do is um, from the closest point, they start they start um, trimming the LIDAR points until there is enough clearance for the car to pass. So they, they will not consider these points as largest gap um, because it's closest to one of the obstacles. So that makes the new path um, somewhere around this and um, uh, there's, uh, make sure that you know, it, it has enough clearance uh, to go that way. Um, Learning-based algorithm, um, uh, very basic one is to use a CNN. And um, um, first of all, you need to record the data while by driving around the, around the racetrack and collecting images, um, and then maybe augmenting them in some way and uh, increasing your data size. And then um, directly control, uh, outputting your control variables uh, by training a CNN. Based on the uh, previous behavior that was observed, it will start uh, predicting the control inputs. Uh, um, this is also not aware of uh, the vehicle dynamics at all. And also it is highly uh, dependent on the data that, uh, that, uh, that it is being trained on. So it's brittle if um, it sees a case where, where it, on which it was not trained before. Might work or might not. Um, after that, uh, let's go ahead and discuss the, the topic of today, model predictive control. 
and uh, two of its variant, which were discussed, which were originally presented in one of the paper um, that all of this is borrowed from um, by Alexander. Um, so model predictive control is basically a trajectory following algorithm. Um, however, unlike PID, MPC is based on um, prediction and can optimize multiple signals um, at the same time while also uh, following multiple constraints. The problem formulation also requires um, a cost function that uh, captures the optimization goals. Um, where is my cursor? Okay. So um, th there is a cost function associated with this pr uh, problem formulation, and it has some constraint that needs to be obeyed. Um, this constraint are from model, can, can either be from model or the environment also. As we'll see in the MPC's implementation, some constraints are from the track. So the problem is uh, solved using of the shelf quadratic solvers. Um, the one that we use is, H is called HPIPM, customized for MPCC, uh, for MPC particularly. Um, um, and the, the, the solver help us to find optimal uh, values for control uh, input signals. Based on uh, on the formulation, it can be, the MPC formulation can be linear or non-linear. However, uh, linear MPC poses a convex optimization problem while non-linear MPC oftentimes is a non-convex problem and are and is solved using sampling-based approaches, um, um, which I will not discuss in this presentation, but um, 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 they're there. So for, for our case, we'll try to linearize, we'll linearize the nonlinear dynamics and then solve the problem using convex optimization again. So MPC being predictive in nature solves for a finite horizon length, meaning given the current state of the, of the model, of the system and the uh, input of the model, what is the expected behavior over, the, over a certain predefined horizon length? The, the first value from this, uh, problem solution, the control input solution is applied um, to, the, to the system. And then the process is again repeated by optimizing it again for the next time step for the entire horizon. And then again, yeah. So this, this figure kind of depicts how this is done. So um, for, for the purpose of autonomous vehicles, um, MPC, as it requires model dynamics to be known. Um, I present here a very, uh, very popular and uh, very simple representation of uh, vehicle dynamics um, using a bicycle model, which greatly sim simplifies the calculation. Um, based on the complexity of the approximated model of this approximated model, the system equations can be uh, very different. Uh, so there, I have a PDF of several different uh, um, uh, car models that can be used. Uh, they are very basic, linear to very advanced and requires a lot of work uh, to find out certain parameters. Even we are struggling with some of the parameters and I'm trying to figure that out. So this slide shows a nonlinear vehicle dynamic model. Many of these uh, equations can be expressed using uh, very basic trigonometry functions. Uh, this 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 particular model also consists of lateral and longitudinal tire forces, as you can see, FRX, F, um, um, FRY, uh, all these are lateral and longitudinal tire forces that can also be modeled. There are several tire models available you can choose uh, from. Um, now, we, we do not need to go into details of these mathematical equations, how they are derived, but knowing what each term represent is important for MPC. Uh, constraint formulation later on um, on this presentation. So the first two one uh, first two are very easy um, change in position in x direction and y direction. The third one is also um, change in orientation of the vehicle uh, with reference to inertial frame. And then the uh, the kinematic kinematic part of the model consists of uh, the uh, longitudinal and lateral velocity and the uh, angular rate of change. Then the control input signals are, uh, so there are two primary uh, control input signal that we'll be using. One of them is uh, to directly control the motor using PWM duty cycle. And the second one is steering 
angle, uh, straight angle, which is represented by delta. Um, now I'm not going to go into detail of the tire model and how it, what what each term means, but uh, let's assume that um, we have we, we know all these parameters and start formulating the problem. So as a prerequisite to the next control method that I'm going to discuss, we first investigate all the stationary velocities of the, of the model that, that I just showed you, the bicycle model. So um, the objective of for evaluating the stationary velocity during this analysis is to find points in the model where all the accelerations are zero. So this is done for um, different constant uh, forward velocities, um, Vx. So for instance, in this one shows for Vx um, 1.5 and Vx uh, 2 meter per second. So for different forward velocity and for different steering angles. So these two values are kept constant and this reduces the, the um, uh, presented model to a nonlinear system of equation with just two variables and two unknowns. Um, in this way, we can find the stationary velocity operating range for different values of steering angles. So as in this case, um, this shows like a, a good uh, variation. So from minus two to two, they are, in this one, we are just representing for two different VX and uh, VX values. But as you can see for these two values, uh, when we uh, change VY values and the Delta values, this is how the behavior is. And then empirically is, is determine how the operating range is. So whether it's normal driving or it's oversteering or understeering. So this way you can kind of formulate a, uh, a table uh, of different velocity, lateral velocities and uh, longitudinal velocities. Um, and um, we'll use this, I'll, 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 I'll show you how this is used. Uh, this is helpful for MPC uh, problem. So the first method for MPC that I'm going to discuss is the, that is also presented in the paper. Um, is HRHC, hierarchical uh, residing horizon controller. Remember, MPC is also called reside, res, res, receding horizon control. So um, there are two components um, um, in this, in this uh, algorithm. First one is path planning, and the second one is model predict control for reference uh, tracking. Now, the path planning is responsible to generate a feasible trajectory uh, with which will uh, guarantee maximal progress across the track. Um, and by feasible here, I mean uh, to say that the model dynamics allow us to follow that reference trajectory under some constraints, obviously. The generated trajectory is then given to the MPC controller to follow. Um, let's go ahead and discuss the path planning uh, stage in more detail. So um, remember a few, um, um, a, a couple of slides ago, I showed you the uh, stationary velocity uh, generation. So we kind of have a, we kind of generate a library of all the stationary velocity with zero acceleration. And um, we'll use this library to grid stationary velocity of the nonlinear system. So um, those equation that we solve for getting these uh, stationary velocity, those equations still remain nonlinear, but they are greatly simplified as the acceleration is zero while calculating that. So this includes velocity from normal and drifting regions, both of those. Um, the grading is uniformly distributed between different uh, um, values of, uh, of uh, longitudinal velocity. For instance, from 0.5 to 3.5 meter per second in a step size of maybe 0.25 meter per second, we kind of have these different values for Vx and then we find uh, from that table, we find out what is the value of Vy and what is the value of Delta and Omega for that operating region. So um, this stationary velocity library does not change over, over uh, during runtime. So it can be generated offline. Um, the trajectory uh, from path planning is generated for the entire horizon by integrating the points. So for the first point, you um, kind of have this, uh, range of Vx velocities that you are getting from the table. You kind of integrate them throughout the horizon that you are choosing. Um, for that entire horizon, now you have uh, kind of these, uh, if, you, if you notice, this, these velocities has zero acceleration. For each, for each path, there is different Vx and Vy and delta, but 
the acceleration it remains zero. So if 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 I integrate them them over a long horizon, uh, notice that it will converge to a circle eventually. So all of these trajectories will at some point converge to a circle. So that's why there is a problem with this approach is that um, the horizon length cannot be too large. Otherwise it will kind of uh, connect itself. So um, to solve this optimization problem, we want to find the best trajectory such that the progress um, along the center line is maximized. That's the first goal. Um, and also these trajectories need to be on the on the track. They should not be. So some of those trajectories, as you can see, are outside the track. See, for now, we are just considering all of them based on based on the table data that we have. But um, this path planning will get rid of all the infeasible tracks and then just get the the one that can be um, followed on on the track. Um, so the optimization also considers the track constraints. As I said, um, the, 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 path, the, the reference trajectory should remain within the track. And also the nearest velocity, the nearest velocity uh, that, we, um, that we, from all the options that we have from, for the velocity, we choose the one that are nearest because at certain point, you are assuming that uh, you are able to reach that, uh, that next velocity in, in one time step. So it needs to be very close to what your current velocity is. It should not be too different. Otherwise, there will be some acceleration over the time and um, uh, defeats the purpose of this uh, path planning algorithm and the stationary velocity concept. So horizon needs to be short, as I said. Uh, otherwise, the plan tragically become circle after integration. So um, there's that. About, that's about path planning part of stage of the HRHC algorithm. Uh, let's move on to model predictive reference tracking. Now, note that in the previous slide, the reference trajectory is generated under the simplified assumption and is not uh, possible to directly track it uh, using like simple control, um, for instance, PID or, 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 or that sort of control, because you are assuming, first of all, that you are uh, using zero acceleration model. But when as, as you move, starting start to move, there will be some deviation from, from what the uh, reference trajectory tells you. So for that, we need a more advanced optimization algorithm. In this case, we'll be using um, PID for tracking that reference path. Now, this is established by penalizing the deviation from uh, reference using quadratic function. So um, that's the main part of the cost function for MPC. Um, then the cost function is linearized along the, along the reference trajectory in order to formulate a convex optimization problem because the dynamics that we assumed initially were non-linear, right? So, um, any questions so far? Yes, it is going to get more mathematical. I'll try to keep it as well as possible, but yeah. Um, this optimization, uh, the MPC optimization is performed under the, as, as like normal MPC is performed under some constraints that the vehicle remains within the track borders, first of all, um, or the two, it's also called two parallel half spaces, for instance, here. So if this is the entire horizon, I'm sorry, if this is the entire horizon, um, we kind of consider these parallel half spaces at each time step. So it looks like this. So the trajectory should remain within this these two borders. Um, also, while solving MPC, the states uh, should state trajectory should be such that it's it's it's, it's within those boundaries um, and then uh, constraints are also applied on states and control input variables so so as to avoid convergence problem due to free variables so all of the states and control input needs to be bounded uh, by some by some way in some way so that um, the con the the solver doesn't find a sweet little spot where the problem is not solved but for it, the cost was minimized. So um, now this, this formulation is solved using a custom solver for MPC called HPIPM, um, um, which is a, so in the paper they say it's, uh, it, the formulation is first converted to C uh, code uh, using a library called forces. Um, I've not looked into that, but um, this HPIPM is the fastest solver that we 
that we have found till now for MPC, uh, for solving the MPC problem that we have at hand. Um, so that's all about the HRSC uh, MPC algorithm. Now let's move on to the uh, very interesting one, which is called MPCC. Now, sorry to interrupt. I just have yes. a question. Could you, yeah. Here you have one optimization problem and this optimization problem has a variable, right? Or two variables, you say velocity and other one for location. So I want to know that this variable, the types of this variable is discrete or other type? Uh, discrete or, oh, so we discretize them while before, sol before giving it to solver. So you have two variables, right? Yes. Both of them has the same type? I can show you the exact optimization based on particle scale. So one, so the main optimization, uh, the cost, cost um, main cost contributor function. to the cost cost function is the uh, is to keep the car um, progress along the center line. So, so I think, the cost function is your objective function. Yes, yes, yes. Cost function is the object. So this function, function has two variable. I think it's this one reference tracking. Yes, yes. It's uh, it looks like this. So the, con the, the control inputs are two in this case. Yes, we need to predict two different uh, control inputs. And the states are, I think, um, uh, seven, seven different states. So these um, ignore these, uh, these are slack variables for track constraints. Um, the main one is this one and this one. This one makes sure that the, I mean, these two make sure that the, um, the car is close to the center line. The, it's, it doesn't deviate too much. And these, this makes sure that the control input doesn't deviate too much. So this variable X here is some types of matrix that has some things or not? So how the paper implements this is basically using uh, uh, parameter. So, for, for in this case, I think uh, this algorithm has slightly different approach uh, for find for representing this xk uh, xn. Um, they do a piecewise for the around the center line. They do a piece linear piecewise uh, division, mm -hmm. and then those each division um, kind of denotes your uh, one step progress. So imagine you have a horizon length of forty, and then you have forty different points on that line which are equally spaced that way. So, so in this paper, this X is defined in somewhere or no? Because usually in the optimization algorithm, we define this X. So did you see that this X is defined in somewhere of this paper? I mean, the X, in this case, the X represents the all the state of, of your- Yeah, uh, these are the constraints of the X, but X should be determined that how uh, it's, you know, the formula of the X is what in some way. I see. Okay, I can see then after your paper, this paper. Uh, yeah, I, I can. I, I, uh, you can share it. Yeah, yeah, I can. I can show it to you later. Okay. Uh, okay. I just they they, they have done some uh, complicated things, which makes sense now to me after I have looked into the algorithm. But they have uh, for the upcoming algorithm, they have done a spline fitting in which they do a parameterization for that spline, and uh, that is helpful to find the closest point on the center line from your current location. Uh, so wherever your car is in, on the center line you can instantly locate using that spline where you exactly are. And that spline function also helps you keep a track of your progress along the track. So those are some new variables that are introduced in this one. I, I'm not sure, Sudarshan, if you know, these are this, this is like a standard approach to solve MPCC to like have a spline or those um, uh, track constraints. 
not okay. drag constraint actually. Yeah. Uh, this client stuff is all MPCC specific, but uh, for MPC, the um, the X value represents the system state. That's all. System state side, yeah. Uh, yeah, and there are some dummy states. I think S or something is dummy states. Uh, That's for track constraint. X one. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So we will have here, uh, if we have let's say seven states. In the solver, we will have seven times the horizon length 50, for example. So we will have 350 states to be so, yes. Uh, calculated. Yes, yes. And those states that that x those x states are nothing but these variables, uh, uh, right? X, yeah. Yes, yes. Yes. So um, okay, let's move ahead on the where was I? Um, Okay, so um, the cost function, as I said, is linearized along the along the reference trajectory across the entire horizon, in order to formulate a complex convex optimization problem. Um, this optimization is performed under the constraint that vehicle remains within the track border and the parallel house space that I just described. Uh, constraint are also applied on state and input. Um, I think I already discussed this. So. Uh, these constraints are applied such that there is no free variable, and then the oh, I think yeah, there there are no free variables, and then the solver doesn't find a uh, a local uh, optimize uh, convergence. Um, let's go and go to the next uh, algorithm, which is MPCC. Um, this one is uh, more of interest to me uh, because uh, we implemented this on our F110 platform, and it. Uh, I'll show you the performance uh, in some time. So, um, MPC control, uh, MPCC control is based on um, contouring. Um, MPC control based on contouring has been uh, widely used in industrial machine tools like milling, uh, turning, and then profiling to control the movement of the tool along a certain reference path. Um, MPCC is different from tracking uh, controllers the one that we just saw in that it has more freedom to determine the straight trajectories as compared to uh, HRSC, which we kind of limit it to keep that certain velocity, that stationary velocity across the entire horizon. This one has more freedom on what it needs to choose as for states, um, such that the cost function is obviously um, uh, satisfied. So um, here, here we'll try to use this formulation for MPCC for uh, autonomous racing purpose. Um, we use center line as a reference path. Um, so there's no path planning algorithm as, as in HRSC, but it is only used as a, uh, the center line reference path is only used as a measure of progress and is given a low weight. Um, otherwise, if, if, if a high weight is given, it will keep following the center line and that's not an optimal line, right? Uh, for racing, of course. Um, the advantage of this approach is that uh, the path planning and tracking both can be combined into one nonlinear optimization problem, and we do not need uh, the overhead of uh, doing path planning using those stationary velocities. Now, the first step uh, of problem formulation, MPCC problem formulation, involves determining a, as I said um, before, determining a spline parameterization of the center line. Um, a spline argument theta, once, once we find out, so we have points along all the center line and we fit, um, depending on the how, how well spaced these points are, we fit um, uh, the spline and that, that will also determine how accurate you will get uh, the position along the center line. So um, there's only one parameter that will be used to reference a point from this, from this um, prefit spline. Um, this parameter is uh, named as theta here. Um, and any point on the center line can be obtained by just giving it this theta. So, and uh, we also store along with the spline uh, equations uh, function, we also store their der derivatives so that we can find, uh, in the next slide I'll show you, we can find this uh, angle to the tangent, um, uh, this phi angle. So, um, that so here as you can see we also store the derivative of of that spline function um now 
uh, parameterization third order. Okay, so it's third order spline polynomial. And uh, um, as I said, it depends. So as compared to HRSC, which does a piecewise linear um, center line segmentation, this one is more like a spline. So it is more accurate. And depending on how well spaced your points are, uh, you'll get the, the, the reference point on the center line. Um, now for any given reference point, we can find the value of theta such that the distance from the reference trajectory or the spline function is minimized. So uh, this equation shows that. So you want to minimize this, um, find the minimum distance of the car from this, uh, suppose this is a center line, okay? So you want to find this distance. So the, the value of this can be uh, represented using this equation. So x minus uh, x ref, if, if you know this, uh, um, I mean, yeah, this equation is used to find the theta value, uh, it's argument. So you find this theta value such that uh, you, are, you get a closest point to the car on, the, on your center line. So this equation is called as, uh, 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 this, this P is denote, denotion is used for projection operator. And uh, the obtained theta value can be used to find contouring error in the next line using a simple trigonometry as shown in the, in the figure above. Um, now that we know the equation of this, uh, of this tangent uh, value. So that can be determined. However, now the problem is you want to find this theta first of all, right? To, to get the contouring error, which is this, you want to minimize this, right? You want to make it follow the center line with a low weight, but yes. So to find this uh, contouring error, you need to know the theta p value. Theta p value, as I said, can be obtained using this equation, but closely look into it, it's another optimization problem. Um, to avoid this, we defined another kind of error called uh, something called as lag error, which is an independent variable uh, determined by the controller itself. So, um, Actually, lag error is not the uh, variable that is determined by the controller. The theta a value is the is the value that is determined by the controller. Um, uh, so this will be in 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 the next slide, as you'll see, it will be um, um, inserted in the dynamics in the vehicle dynamics, um, uh, but for representing the progress along the center line. So um, and there will also be a velocity velocity associated with that, which is called virtual velocity. So these two equation, again, using simple trigonometry, if you, if you look on the second, second uh, plot here, uh, the EC, this is a true value, right? But the EC uh, hat and EC, uh, sorry, EL hat, these are two estimates, right? These are the true values. These are the two esti estimates. We can represent them without using the, the previously described projection operator. Um, which makes gives us an optimization problem. So we are trying to avoid that, remember. So if we know the theta A, which is solved by the controller itself as optimization problem, we can find out uh, both of these estimate EC uh, hat and ECL, uh, EL hat. So it's essentially solving for theta P again, like this, but remember it's uh, it's an approximation which is given by the controller, solved by the controller. So you need to kind of have a track of how bad it is. So if if this EC theta A minus theta P is, is very, very small, you are basically finding EC, right? This will overlap on this one. So let's uh, go ahead and discuss the actual formulation. Um, now that we have discussed the uh, prerequisite for solving this. So now given the progress measure, let's try to formalize the problem using cost function. Um, the main objective of uh, MPCC cost function here is uh, a trade-off between a quality of tracking um, that is minimizing the contouring error, EC, and the amount of progress along the track. Um, so the first term represent uh, the quality of tracking. So how far are you from the center line? The second term represents um, the progress. The theta value is basically saying, um, so on that spline parameterization, how far are you from the start? So uh, you want to um, 
uh, reach to the end as fast as possible. So that's why this is negative. Now, um, this is of course uh, subject to model dynamics track uh, and uh, also input constraints. However, um, remember that we have replaced uh, the contouring error in this equation you see EC, but we have replaced it with the estimates of contouring and lag errors. So therefore let's uh, go ahead and replace that in this equation. This is a very ideal equation. If we had a way of finding this EC using that um, projection operator, we, we, we don't have to do any of this. So let's go to the um, modified equation. Um, now, before, before we, so there's a lot of maths here. I'll try to describe each term here. Um, before we go to the cost function, let's see, um, this is, the new variable that we are adding. This is a control input signal that we are adding, which will be solved by the controller itself. So um, now this relation makes sense because the VK here represents a new virtual velocity, a new virtual state, uh, which, which basically denotes the virtual velocity along the spline. So um, that's about, so, um, uh, equation is in turn, yeah. The first equation, uh, this, this should be easy to understand, right? Any question about that? This is nothing but a displacement along the center line. So VK is representing how you're moving along the center line, how fast you're moving along the center line. So if you have covered a lot of thetas, it will increase deeply. Any questions about this, this equation? So this will be inserted in our uh, dynamics formulation and solved by the controller. Now the cost function here, um, uh, it has been modified to account for the estimates, the two estimates that we used in the in turn, in turn of um, EC, which cannot be found. So uh, this is the first one is the contouring error. The second one is the lag error. The third term is the progress again, negative sign. And remember now we have in the previous slide, this was just theta PN, but now that we have added that equation on top, um, we can replace it with the proper formulation. So now we have VK into TS, which represent um, the displacement along the center line that you have encountered so far. And you want to maximize this, not minimize it. So. That's why negative sign. Now the uh, the next term is uh, to limit the change in input uh, input variables. So you don't want your steering to be moved too far from your existing steering. That's why we need to have a, a limit on this. So there's a cost associated with this, and then you have a limit on how much you can progress, how much your virtual velocity can change around the track. So that VK is again constrained here. Um, of course, um, this formulation comes with some some other constraints for the virtual velocity in the and the data parameterization constraints, as shown here. And then I this equation doesn't show it, but there's also there are also constraints associated with the state variables and the other input variables. Just a question here. Yes. Uh, here you want to minimize this equation, right? Yes. With, with some variables. So which variable should be minimized? I mean, if you have, for example, two variables, how you compare these variables to each other? For example, one solution can be, for example, x1, y2, and the other one, x2, y1. So how you find which one is minimal in this equation? So this, this entire equation needs to be minimized, right? It's not just one of those terms. It, they're all part of the optimization problem. Okay. So yeah. the function, the, the answer of the function, you want to minimize that. Exactly, yes. Yes, right. entire, entire cost function needs okay. to be minimized. Yes, yes, yes. And yeah, this is square of that distance, uh, those estimates. Um, so you want to, let go back. You want to minimize the estimate of this and the estimate of this. Right, so that you are on the true value of EC. And again, EC has a cost associated with it because 
Remember, initially, when we described MPCC, we said the progress is determined by following the center line, but there's a low weight on it. So the, 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 the cost function doesn't care too much about following the center line. And that's what we want. We don't want the car to be following center line all the time. Otherwise, we'll, we'll be non-optimal. So um, there are some other constraints um, associated with the track. So the vehicle should remain within the track boundaries. Now the track, the true boundaries, and there is a buffered boundaries that we, uh, we use for track constraint. We don't use the true boundaries because we want to account for the width of the car also. So in case it, it it's a soft constraint, so it can be violated, but uh, if we have a buffer, it, it will still be safe. Now um, that was about the MPCC formulation and how, how we approach that. Um, here we show a difference between the both, both of those approach. Um, the main thing that you'll see different is the path planner thing here. There's a path planner. Other than that, border adjustment is same. Um, now this border adjustment is done for obstacle avoidance, which I'll discuss in a bit. So ignore this part. However, um, the linearization and discretization of the model is same. Then you solve using uh, on the quadratic solvers and then send the first control at the end of time slot. So, and then repeat this again. Any questions so far? So this is another comparison between um, both of approaches. Um, as you can see, um, the H, uh, HRHC uh, kind of, they, they are kind of similar, but if you notice, it is taking lo longer uh, routes uh, around here. And then notice this one. Are you able to see my cursor? Yes, we can. Okay, so uh, around here, you can see it's going too close to the border, which where it, whereas MPCC is safely, and remember, they both are navigating at full speed um, possible. So uh, MPCC kind of prepares itself earlier in time to take this turn because, the, because of the horizon benefit MPCC has over HRSC. Remember, HRSC cannot have long horizon because of the integration loop problem, it will change the trajectory into a loop. So it's not able to see as far ahead as MPCC can, but um, it performs not too bad on this, around this, uh, this, this part of the track. You can see it, it goes fairly straight. However, MPCC takes a slight turn, which results in some time, time loss. However, MPCC overall, um, performs far better than HRSC, uh, completes the lap like two or three seconds earlier. And then let's quickly discuss the obstacle avoidance part. Now the in the obstacle avoidance, um, how, uh, remember how I said that um, we kind of um, add the border constraints to the optimization problem, right? Uh, the car should be within those constraints, um, those border constraints. So these dynamic obstacles, um, whenever they are um, in the in the view of our, our agent, we kind of divide the entire uh, view into grid and then find uh, new borders around, around here. So for instance, in this case, um, the new track constraints are formed like this, right? Now this, this could have been like this um, from, from the bottom of the second car. However, MPCC decided that it's not, uh, maybe it will have to reduce the, uh, the speed or something, and it's not optimal to go from there. So it decided to, to take this one. So it's not uh, the MPCC, actually, it's the, it's the path planning algorithm that decides which, which um, a gap will be larger and better for the car to pass. And, uh, which results in lesser uh, state deviation. So, so this is how we add new constraints for obstacles. Now, there's a problem that these are not, um, when they experimented this paper, um, these are not moving obstacles. They are sta static obstacles. So it's easy to map them, but 
when they are moving, we have to kind of estimate their behavior also, and then add them as a track constraint or maybe some other approach. Now, once, once you have added them as a track constraint, um, um, you can just use your old good uh, optimization formulation and solve this problem again. So if there is a feasible path, MPCC will be able to solve it basically. So here's the original paper implementation uh, video uh, for MPCC. It's not HRSC, this is MPCC. So this is without obstacle. It's taking sharp turns, as you can see. So. Yeah, so that's MPCC on 143rd scale. And now I'll show you our implementation on F110 simulation. So the left one is more uh, um, conservative. It will not go as crazy as the right one, but still it drives like expert race driver. Look at those drifts. Um, this one is nice, uh, yeah. So this one is more crazy. It will kind of almost go in the opposite direction and then come back. So now that's the one tenth implementation of the second algorithm that I discussed. Now the overview of both algorithm is uh, just quickly cover these. Um, as I said, dynamic obstacles add. So yeah. Um, doing that all gridding and then doing the dynamic programming to find the um, best path towards the end of the obstacle requires more time and in addition to MPCC original computation cost uh, optimization. Um, there's no obstacle behavior prediction implemented in this paper. Um, the HRSC algorithm, there's some comparison, I think, yeah. Velocity fixed over the horizon, while for MPCC velocity varies over the horizon and the, the, the goal is not to keep the velocity constant as in HRHC. We kind of sample from a stationary velocity table. Um, so unlike um, HRHC, MPCC can have large horizon lengths, already discussed. Um, MPCC lap time was less than HRHC lap time, so it is better, uh, MPCC is better. The computation, however, is more for MPCC as compared to HRSC. Um, now this is for this is a uh, uh, look ahead uh, time for MPCC. So for n equal to forty and sampling time for each step is twenty millisecond, uh, MPCC looks uh, 0.8 seconds ahead of where it is right now. So that's about both of the algorithms. I wanted to discuss RL approaches, but I figured I will not have enough time to discuss that paper. So maybe next time. And anyway, I will be taking a couple of RL lectures. So it will make sense to do it after that. Can I ask a question? Sure. Uh, as you mentioned, MPCC is the better uh, algorithm here, but so you don't mention any disadvantages or any difficulties to use this for. So is there any disadvantage for using this MPCC algorithm? Yes, there was one big disadvantage. Uh, one, there is actually uh, a computation time. Now it's a function of your horizon length. So you kind of have to tune all of those things to come within the, so for racing, uh, the, the, the response time should be very fast, right? So MPCC for us, when we initially implemented it was giving us like 80 millisecond uh, computation time, but now it's reduced to around 15, 17 millisecond, which is um, better, far better than the initial time. So although we have a, a comprom although the, the performance itself is not compromised, but we have compromised with some horizon lengths. So I reduce that. And then there is a step where we calculate the exponential of a matrix we, where it's doing that uh, Taylor series expansion. So I reduce the amount of um, um, component that it the Taylor series computes in in uh, in that equation. So 
it and takes time that's one one problem with mpcc but um, i think um, community has optimized uh, this a lot uh, with time and is there any possibility to combine these two optimization uh, in, to, in to combine these two algorithms to find a better algorithm that uh, eliminates these these disadvantages and find a new one Mm, so the MPCC itself is a combination of both path planning and uh, tra trajectory tracking as in HRSC, there are two different components for path planning, you solve a different optimization to find the best path that fits inside your uh, track constraints and then solve the problem using MPC. However, there's, there is a discussion around this in the paper where they say that HRSC can be modified to work on a variable velocity, but then it will increase the storage and uh, there, there will be more analysis that needs to be done on different velocities. And then throughout the horizon, can you like have different multiple velocities? If that is the case, the um, even then the horizon length cannot be incre increased for HRHC um, because of that uh, circular problem. So I'm not sure how, else do you have any ideas you can you can definitely tell me but i can't think of how we can combine these to combine these two mpcc mpcc seems to be a better approach because it has everything hrsc has Sorry. yeah do you have any ideas mm, usually we can mm, combine and find a hybrid algorithm, but I should see what's the components of each algorithm and how we can combine them together. Maybe it's, you know, some types of try and error effort. So maybe we can find and maybe we cannot. So for this problem, maybe we can find it. So I should see what's exactly the uh, components of the algorithms but uh, it can be i think because we have two the best ones so we can find uh, another one to eliminate this disadvantage of each other or adding some other techniques to them maybe find the, the better algorithm so sure, sure. it can be the next step i think for this Yeah, I mean, for now, I don't see any problem with our MPCC implementation. Um, mm -hmm. The only thing that I need to um, evaluate, which I'm going to do this week, is uh, to see how much the performance is deviating when there is an obstacle. So as I said, obstacle avoidance needs its own computation time. So I don't know how much that will affect the performance because in head-to-head -head racing, we'll have another opponent, uh, opponent. Also, I need to check how well it performs if I am dynamically mapping uh, a moving obstacle inside the track con track con constraints. Right. Yeah. Any other questions? It is a very well prepared and presented uh, session for um, controlling uh, autonomous racing cars. Thank you. Yeah, please share the slides with me uh, after yes. the presentation. I yes. think you already, uh, you, yeah. I'll upload them on the on the Google Sheets. Yeah. Good. Yeah, but drop me an email so so I just a reminder. Yeah. Yes, yes, I will do that. All right, this will end the session today. And just another reminder, Tuesday we don't have Zoom sessions. Uh, it's going to be pre-recorded lectures. Sure. All right. See you guys on Thursday. Yeah. Bye. Yeah. See you. Good job, Natish. Thank you.